This is the third video in the series on Extrema. In this video, we'll be assuming that you've already watched the video on critical points and the video on first derivative test. So we've seen that a local maximum of function occurs when the first derivative function changes from positive to zero through to negative. This must mean that the first derivative of the function itself is decreasing. Now a function is decreasing when its own derivative is negative. But the derivative of the first derivative function is actually the second derivative. So what this means is that when the second derivative of a function is negative, at the critical point itself, the original function must be at a maximum value, just like this. Similarly, working the other way, when the second derivative is positive at the critical point, the original function must be at a minimum value. So remember from the first derivative test video that that test can be a little bit tedious and sometimes messy, a little bit tricky. This second derivative test idea, based on the reasoning from the previous slide, it's easier to apply. The problem is that it doesn't always work. So here's what the second derivative test is. Say we've got a function f of x with a critical point at x equals c and f of c. First thing we need to do is find the second derivative, f double dashed of x. In other words, find the derivative and then find its derivative. If that second derivative at the critical point is positive, then the critical point is straight away a minimum. If it's negative, the critical point's a maximum. If it's equal to zero though, it doesn't tell us anything. And we have to go back and try the first derivative test. Okay, let's check out an example. We're gonna find the critical points of y equal to four x cubed minus three x squared minus 90 x plus 120, and then classify them using the second derivative test. Remember to find critical points. We need to find the derivative, dy dx. It's gonna be 12 x squared minus six x minus 90. We need to set that equal to zero and solve that quadratic. So we find that x1 and 2 will be 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4 times 12 times minus 90. And jumping to our calculator, that's going to be plus 4320. And that's all divided by 2 times a, or 24. Now again, using our calculator, that square root there is the square root of 4,356, which is 66. And we end up with 72 on 24, or three. And six minus 66, which is minus 60 on 24, or minus two and a half. Now, just to check that those make sense, we'll have a look at the picture over here. Looks like we're gonna have a critical point here and another one here. And yeah, they look roughly to be about three and minus two and a half. So that sounds good. Let's go ahead and classify those now using the second derivative test. Now back here it says we need to find the second derivative and then evaluate it at the critical points. So the second derivative is d2y dx squared or the derivative of dy dx. And that's gonna be equal to 24x minus six. We wanna evaluate that at the first critical point, which was x equals three. We get three by 24 is 72 minus six is 66. It's greater than zero, that's a positive number. So that tells us that at x equals three, we have a minimum. Second derivative bigger than zero is a minimum. So let's check that one back here. Yep, looks about right. Curves obviously going down to a minimum there. Let's just check it with minus 2.5 dty dx squared at x equals minus 2.5. That's going to be equal to minus 2.5 by 24, which is going to be minus 60. Take away another 6 is minus 66. That's less than 0, of course. So at x equals minus 2.5, we have a local maximum. And again, that corresponds with what we see in the picture that I've given you there. So we've found our critical points for that function, just here, and then classified them according to the second derivative test. So that's it for the videos on Extrema. If you're looking in other texts, check out their section on Extrema. Sometimes they call it curve sketching, but mainly we're focused on finding and identifying maxima and minima of functions. You might wanna add the details of these tests and how to find critical points to your cheat sheet as well. 
make sure you're attempting the exercises from the worksheet to get plenty of practice.